Ladies and gentlemen of the Gaming Telecom video, you might have heard of DirectX 12. Probably a good chance since you can't walk about two feet without stumbling over an article or some claims regarding its performance recently, especially on the PC side of things. On the Xbox One, it's been a little more cagey. And you might recall that the first title which was supposedly going to be utilised in DX12 for the X1 was the now cancelled Fable Legends. But there's a good possibility that, well, you've actually played a DirectX 12 title on the Xbox One. If you're left scratching your head, you're not the only one. During the GDC 2016 presentation, of course, a lot of developers have been taken to the stages and, you know, saying, this is what we've managed to achieve, this is what we've managed to accomplish with this technology. But really interestingly, the folks over at DICE were presenting um, their findings regarding the Frostbite free engine and what they've managed to achieve with it. And we already know that that supports DX12, so no harm, no foul there. But, interestingly, they claim that Star Wars Battlefront is the first DirectX 12 title on the Xbox One, which is pretty darn interesting because it means a whole myriad of different things, which we'll go into in just a moment. Now, I do realise a lot of you folks have been emailing me, messaging me, and sending me all of these different uh, conferences and breakdowns, which is really awesome, and I do want to cover them all uh, over the next couple of days, but because GDC has still been going on, I did want to kind of cover something that may also be made better with another conference and we could kind of amalgamate them all, so I'll be certainly doing a breakdown of GDC over the next couple of weeks, since I've no longer got the flu, which is kind of nice, I've got to say, but anyway... Um, as I said, I want to tackle this specifically, and the reason I'm bringing this up is just because of the bizarre nature of it. Now, I think it's fair to say that no one really expected you to boot up the Xbox One one day after a dashboard update, and to have a little flashing icon that says DirectX 12 mode activated, and that was it. You know, or we didn't expect a splash screen for a game to pop up and it says congratulations you are running your first DirectX 12 title we have scanned your hard drive scanned your game of profile and we know that this is your first experience have at it boys and girls no that's not what we expected we knew that like most cons well like all development it's typically done kind of behind the scenes and you know you don't really know what's happening I mean Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo have done some pretty big updates without us ever really knowing what they've done. I mean, look at the first year or so of the Xbox One's lifespan when we kind of saw this progress from the leaked SDK. They've done things like rewrite the entire graphics driver. They massively um, changed the landscape of development when they unlocked the 7th CPU core. They've done all of this stuff, and we didn't know that. I mean, yeah, we might have thought, well, games are looking kind of sweet now, but we didn't know, oh, hey, look, they've they've opened up an entire new processor core. We didn't know that. And that's very much like what's happening with DirectX 12. Since I've got you here, I might as well talk for a few more moments regarding some of that other finding as GDC, which uh, Shockers were reporting because they had attended the conference. So... Common next generation graphics API across, across PC and console. Obviously, the PS4 does not count. It does not use DirectX 12. It has its own comparative um, APIs, for example, GNM and GNMX, um, which probably have got undergone some changes. And there are some folks who are campaigning for it to be utilizing Vulkan, which of course is, I guess you could say, a competitor to DX12, but that's beside the point. Unsurprisingly, there is significant reduction in CPU overhead compared to DX11, and direct access to the GPU hardware to deliver the highest performance possible, and up to 50% CPU and 20% GPU performance improvements. Now, none of that is really surprising, but unfortunately much of this pertains to the PC side of things. We don't necessarily know how much of an improvement DX12 is giving the Xbox One, in this case with Star Wars. 
because in the next slides they say they say stuff such as significant improvements for in the DX12 PC drivers, um, deep partnerships with Nvidia, and so on and so on, um, and adding PC support for Performance Investigator for Xbox, which is known as PIX. If you're not familiar with what PIX is, it's essentially, I guess you could say, a a graph of what your game is doing. By which I mean, as you know, if you're a PC gamer, you can run something like Fraps, and you can get an approximation of what your frame rate is. If you run other applications, you can get an indication of, let's say, how much GPU usage you've got. Or if you decide to, you can, of course, look at how much processor utilization you've got. But you can't necessarily find out, well, rendering these textures or running this AI or let's say, for the sake of argument, drawing this set of buildings takes this amount of performance, and that's what PIX does. I'm breaking this down to a greatly simplified uh, level, but essentially it means that you can figure out when things are loading into memory, how you can optimize that, should you perhaps reduce the quality on X, or maybe you've got frames to spare, and it all comes down to frame rate budget. It all comes down to how fast you can draw a frame. For example, let's say you're targeting 30 FPS for sake of argument on a console. That means that you've got 33, roughly, milliseconds per, f per frame to render the whole thing. So, in other words, if you consistently have, keep within that time budget of 33 ms, you can maintain 30 FPS, right? So, each frame of animation, of course, is what creates the 30 FPS. I think that made sense. I went around a really bloody long way, but still. So, what does this mean for the Xbox One? Unfortunately, we just do not know. What I'd really love, and I don't necessarily know if they're going to release it to the public, I would bloody well, well like them to, and maybe it'll happen over the next month or couple of months, or maybe 12 months, is for a developer to come out and show a comparison on the Xbox One. So for the sake of argument, they would run a piece of code, whatever that code is, it's irrelevant, but let's say Star Wars for this sake of argument, and they would run that and show their levels of performance with DX11 or the Xbox One's old API, and then they would do the same with DX12. There are some really, really interesting results that I think you'd probably find from that. However, DirectX 11, on the PC is a very different beast from the API that was found inside the Xbox One. I'm paraphrasing a little bit here, but and we've covered this a couple of times over, but essentially the Xbox One API of DirectX 11 has been heavily modified from what you found on the PC. For one, they cut out a lot of the useless gunk that was basically cluttering up the PC side of things, for example, they know that there's only a certain graphics chip inside the system, there's only a certain CPU, there's a certain audio chip, there's a certain amount of RAM. They don't need to worry about, you know, supporting AMD, um, they don't need to worry about supporting other AMD architectures, they don't need to worry about supporting other NVIDIA GPUs or Intel CPUs. They know that that AMD GPU is what they've got to work with, so they can cut out a lot of that abstraction there, which meant, of course, performance was a lot higher anyway. But, I find this rather interesting news. Um, it's not necessarily an oh my god, is in, it's revolutionary, but it's rather interesting that they have actually shipped a DX12 game, supposedly, and that DX12 game turned out to look pretty darn beautiful, if I do say so myself. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. It's been a fairly brief one, at least for me. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.